Ladies and gentlemen, Side Strafe back. And today I thought I'd give you a dose of Star Citizen off stream for a change. I have been playing a lot of this and Elite Dangerous lately, so definitely getting my space fix in. But uh, this is my press account. It's an account the devs hooked me up with some time ago. Uh, it gives me access to an, a few other ships that I don't actually own. Um, my normal account has a uh, F7C Hornet as well as a, a Gladius and a, a Razor that I got through the uh, friend referral programs. But uh, today, this is the Anvil Aerospace Terrapin. It's, I believe, uh, labeled as a pathfinding ship, uh, search and rescue, maybe some exploration. Uh, kind of neat looking boat. Uh, I think people call it the Space Turtle. Uh, I've always been curious about these thrusters, how they're angled. I guess it's so that the front doesn't interfere with the back, but I wonder if this would actually work properly. I mean, I guess they are angling all the thrust towards the center position, but I don't know. It's still an interesting design. It's kind of cool how you get those effects in the back there. Um, I don't know that it's fully functional. You've got this radar dish in the center. There's a uh, second seat uh, inside the vessel. that is supposed to operate it, but it doesn't really work. Let me take a look at this real quick before we begin our mission. I think there's a little bit of a glitch with the chair. Sometimes they're getting up. But yeah, this is the uh, radar dish seat. I think they call it, what, support station. Although, interestingly enough, there's only really one bed. I guess you're doing your job in shifts. So, I don't know, at least you've got your restroom here. And then you can open up this side door. I always love the animations on these ships. But anyways, yeah, there should be enough for uh, This delivery mission. I don't know. Maybe we're just going to pick up a box or something. All right. Let's have a seat. I've never actually been able to complete a delivery mission. I tried to once, but, um, well, something interesting happened. If we have time, I'll tell that story. <laughs> All right. Back in business. Let's see. I think the wreck site is somewhere back here. Now, I am using HOTAS, hands-on throttle and stick. And I do have access to track IR5. Now, the problem with track IR is the following. If I activate it, well, you can see my helmet display just starts wandering around the screen. It is not following my head movements in the same way that if my uh, if I was using mouse. So if I recenter it, pause track IR usage use my mouse to look around, you can see that it sticks with it. But again, activate track IR and it just starts doing whatever it wants. So there's clearly an issue there. Now, there is a, a temporary solution. The problem is it's often a dangerous solution. And that involves removing your helmet. Well, if you end up somewhere that doesn't have oxygen, you're kind of in trouble. And sometimes these ships are glitchy. And, um, yeah, you just start gagging at, at the weirdest times. So you got to be really careful. Like, if I were to leave the seat, I think I start uh, having trouble breathing. Oh, or, 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 that, or that happens. <laughs> the funny thing is, is I didn't even do anything. Oh my goodness. I didn't even, I just, I was just sitting there almost waiting, like something feels weird. And I, yeah, I just, I just flat out croaked. So I don't know if, is the cabin not oxy oxygenated in, in the Terrapin? Things are feeling kind of fuzzy too. That's weird. Oh my goodness. Anyways, welcome to Star Citizen. Um... Yeah, so that's kind of the problem with using track IR sometimes in the more glitchy ships. 
<laughs> you know, I was thinking, I was thinking to myself, please don't do this while I'm trying to record a video. Please work properly. Please let me at least get away f with this through, through the video. And then, yeah. <sighs> Anyways, so yeah, this is the press account. I do not own these ships. Uh, well, that was the Terrapin. Hope you guys got to enjoy that. I think that normally doesn't happen in the other ships if I take off my helmet. I'll just claim that for later. Let's find another ship. Alright, so anyway, we gotta do a, a delivery thing. We need a ship that has cargo space, at least a little bit of cargo space. What could we get? Hmm. Uh. Well, I know there's technically space in one of these things. A little bit more than we would actually need, but... This one's a dropship variant. We can put it in the dropship bay, maybe. Yeah, let's do that. I've wasted enough of your guys' time with my shenanigans here. Your ship has been delivered to the following landing pad. Not my fault! Game needs... Wait, did it tell me... Alright, well, whatever. No, that's the wreck site. Where's... Oh, it's over there. Okay. This is version 3.3 3 or 3, whatever of the game. I think 3.4 is on the way. I don't know if that issue's been resolved, but... So yeah, don't take off your helmet. And in fact, put your helmet back on before leaving the airlock. Because it's actually not on right now. My goodness. Alright, so yeah. Saved. Remember, just in time. You can tell because the UI is a little bit different. Because there's like a helmet HUD UI and there's a non-helmet HUD UI. Which, honestly, I don't like 3D. I just like plain old 2D UIs. I really wish they wouldn't do this whole Moby Glass 3D HUD thing. I, I don't like that the the helmet HUD is attached to the actual helmet. Uh, even if it wasn't for Track IR. I'd rather they... They not do it that way, or at least allow me to just turn off those elements because there should be a way to do that if you can take off your helmet and it disappears. Maybe if there was a toggle switch added. Anyways, all right, this is the Aegis uh, Warden Hoplite, which is a dropship and it can carry some uh, troops into battle here you can see they can strap in and there's only the one pilot seat and then there's a uh, gun turret pretty badass looking ship power on all right uh, gotta look around right yeah i love the design of this thing the other one's the Warden that has a different paint job on it. This is just a mean looking bird. I love Aegis and Anvil. They're my favorite manufacturers in the game so far. Anyways, alright. Uh, let me see if we're still locked on to our mission. Okay, there it is. Set route. And F2 gets us out. We won't take off the helmet this time. Reasons obviously already demonstrated. Spool on up. On the way. Here's hoping I don't randomly get ejected from my cockpit. Yeah, that was weird too, because I didn't even actually do anything. Anyways, so the last time I tried to do one of these wreck site missions, somebody tried to ambush me. Flew up, got out of my ship, my ship started to leave without me. And I was like, oh, <laughs> either that was a glitch or somebody stole my ship. And so, okay, I log out. 
There's no way back. I log back in, end up at the, the port I was just at. That never gets old, by the way. And I'm spinning out of control for reasons, I guess. Um, all of a sudden, I see an, an icon pop up on the screen. It's a blue icon. It says, it's my ship. Lo and behold, there's my ship. It, and I was using the freelancer on the press account just to check it out. I was trying to do a cargo run. I float over there. Let me check this out. There's a guy sitting in the cargo bay. Just sitting there. He's AFK. Doesn't acknowledge me. Just chilling there. I think he's on his Moby glass. Now, when you're at the station, you're in an armistice, so you can't shoot at anybody. You can't attack. And I guess we'll need to go to this quantum beacon. So, I get in the pilot seat. Fly the ship out of the armistice. Leave the seat. Pull out my blaster. Put several rounds into him. He's done. <laughs> and right then and there, I thought to myself, you know what? This is like Daisy in space. It reminds me of the weird situations you get yourself into in Daisy. Hilarious. So I got a little bit of justice there for the guy stealing my ship. Don't steal my ship. But yeah, I think that's the issue with these wreck sites is they're not procedural. Like they're potentially always in the same location. And so I think people know about them, and I'm guessing that guy was just hidden somewhere, you know, behind the debris or in the rocks, waiting for somebody to pull up and then take their ship. Now, the thing that you can do now is you can lock your ship. I don't know how well it works. Anyways, I'm going to activate track IR here for a little bit, even if that thing wanders around, just so that I can have some situational awareness. Also going to make sure that I don't have any target acquisition. You know, in spite of all the bugs and issues with this, uh, game sure is pretty. There's no doubt about that. All right, I don't know if there's a timer to this mission, so maybe I should hurry up. Pop my ship's lights. All right, there's the target, the goods. I'm gonna move the ship over here because I imagine if somebody did show up, they might head in from this route. Okay, I'm going to recenter, track IR, pause it, and, um, actually... Proximity alert. Head. Proximity alert. Starboard. Leave the seat. Hopefully not die. Open the... There might be a lighting issue there. I close this. I almost need like a remote con remote shut off switch. I think there's kind of a Oh, oh, oh. Okay. I'm not sure what happened there. I want to close that without killing myself because I believe we've locked the ship. There's a body there. Yeah, this individual has definitely seen better days. The goods. Grab the goods. All right. We have the asset in hand. OK, 
Can I open this while the goods are in my possession? Crazy wreck. All right. Carrying the package. I'm going to put it... Oh, wait. I've never done this before, by the way. Got it? Place. All right. It's a little clunky. Seal her up. For some reason, I can't access my pistol. I don't know why. Oops. Didn't mean to hit that. Anyways, that's there. Hopefully it uh, doesn't go anywhere. I guess I could put it somewhere else, but we'll just leave it there for now. The ship should be locked. Okay. Oh, we got a contact. There is actually a contact there. Actually, potentially two contacts. I'm going to go evasive just in case. Again, I apologize for the flaky track IR. UI nonsense. All right, delivery drop off. Uh, can I route this on the map? Delivery drop off at Daymar. Daymar, ah, uh, always sunny. Okay. Spooling up. Track IR. <laughs> Way we go. Yeah, that always hiccups there too. Anyways, I'm just going to turn off track IR for a bit there because that's kind of annoying. A little bit of a quantum view. Now, the quantum tra travel is neat, but I will say, uh, I think there are a few things that Elite Dangerous does better for uh, short range travel, and that's uh, what they call Super Cruise. And that example is going to be coming up here. So, normally, if you come out of frame shift drive in Elite Dangerous. Uh, and let's say you need to get to somewhere on the other side of this planet. You would then enter Super Cruise, which would allow you to travel pretty quickly through space and, and get around the planet, just manually flying. Um, but with quantum travel, it seems like you have to bring up the quantum travel interface, pick a, like a bunny hop point, like a waypoint, Quantum to that, and then pick another waypoint, and then quantum to that. So you're you're leapfrogging from point to point to point. It's a little clunky um, as opposed to the Super Cruise and Elite. So hopefully they borrow that idea in some way. So I guess we go here. Again, I've never done one of these drop-off missions, so bear with me, please. Sound kind of glitches out during this, too. I feel like it's different per ship. So I don't really know the completion of each vessel in the game. I do love the effects of quantum travel, though. Jumping out never gets old. Alright, so... 
delivery drop off. Do I need to? Let me double check something here. Let me look at the map. Daymar. I think if you double click it. Does it say exactly where we're going? Hmm. Delivery. I think it's on the other side. Like, I'm guessing that's the, del the drop off, and this is us. Alrighty. Um. Alright, so I guess I have to. Yeah, so I guess that's saying that it's on the other side. So now, normally in Elite, I would just super cruise around. But now I think I have to pick a waypoint. Oops. This spooling system is kind of clunky. We quantum to this point. Then hopefully it gets us around... Daymar and maybe then we'll have visibility on the actual objective. So is there a way for me to faster cruise to that? Or do I need to just cruise to this and then fly to the Let's do that. Since it's close to it. Still trying to get the hang of things. I think they're making some improvements to Super Cruise in patch 3.4. Yeah, I mean, so that made it a lot closer, so... Again, normally, or did I say super cruise? I meant quantum travel. Sorry, playing too much elite dangerous. Um, you know, normally in, in that game, I'd just be in super cruise going to the, the waypoint. But here it's like you got to go from point to point to point to get to a, a destination. But man, this game is gorgeous. There's no denying that. I mean, it is just absolutely stunning. Hitting the atmosphere now. That's pretty cool. Try to keep her level here. But yeah, I love just being able to look around and enjoy the scenery. And that's kind of what this has been for me lately. Now in patch 3.5, there goes the track IR, it's all over the place. Um, they're revamping the, the flight model. Uh, complete overhaul, so things are going to be quite different. I'm very much looking forward to that. Um, supposedly right now, in regards to atmospheric planets, uh, there is a... I believe there's a drag coefficient, but not a lift. So you end up with a flight that 
is somewhat similar to space and it, it, it gets kind of weird. So I guess with 3.5 you're going to start seeing ships behave a lot differently. So if you know if you have wings, you're going to be able to perform better than somebody that's just, you know, a brick with thrusters. So that's going to be really cool because I, you know, I always love the the looks of the the traditional fighter craft that are generally winged. Where is this thing? What are we dropping off to? Like an outpost or something? But man, this scenery is great. All the heat blur and everything. So cool. Maybe we can head on over to Tashi Station, pick up some power converters. Man, look at that. That's, that's almost photorealistic. Absolutely stunning. I love doing canyon runs through here with faster craft. This thing's a dropship variant, but it's still got some speed to it. too much afterburner there. I can't help it. I get carried away. It's my objective. You could get lost out here. It'd be fun when they incorporate more in terms of search and rescue. I think the cool thing is you can actually uh, activate a, a beacon. So in case you're, I don't know, if something happens to your ship, you get stranded somewhere, you could actually have another player come get you. And this is a lot further away than I thought. I hope I'm doing the right thing. I always get distracted by these canyonous areas. Got to be careful because of the wingspan on this thing. I haven't done any canyon runs in, in one of these, so normally I do it in something a lot lighter and faster, like a Gladius or something. Gain some altitude.
I think these things are getting new sound effects too. I'm not sure if that's 3.5 or 3.6. Ah, uh, this track I are nonsense. It's bugging me. I will have a link in the description below to a uh, a report, a bug report that somebody else actually submitted, but I added to it. If you uh, want to take a look at it, if you're a track IR user as well. Uh, maybe give the issue a little bit more attention because, you know, I, again, I get it. It's probably not a priority. They got more important things to do, but the more people that I figure report the issue or confirm it, uh, you know, maybe you can get some traction. My biggest fear is that they spend so much more time focusing on FOIP that they ignore track IR, which would be kind of rough because a lot of flight sim enthusiasts do use the device. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe we could have made a different approach to get to the objective sooner. I don't know. Maybe I did something wrong. Again, normally, if this was that other game, I probably would have been able to super cruise to the destination and kind of drop out almost right on top of it. I thought that this uh, would br bring me closer to it. I don't know if there was a way to super cruise to the drop-off. I, I I couldn't get a quantum lock on it. Um, so maybe this is intentional. Again, I've never done this before, so I apologize if I'm, you know, doing the wrong thing. But I'm enjoying the scenery, so as long as you have time, I do. <laughs> Doesn't really bother me. Um, but I guess realistically, if you had a destination, you'd probably put in your coordinates and fly straight to it. Instead of, you know hitting a very specific location uh, outside of the objective. Good looking aircraft. I think it was inspired by the uh, P-38 Lightning originally. Some sort of outpost. Let's figure out where we're going to land. or something. It's hard to tell. Maybe up forward a little bit more. Proximity alert. Deck. Yeah, we're not... Proximity alert. What am I hitting? Proximity alert. Stop. Maybe I'm hitting that hill. Proximity alert. Deck. Maybe I could cheat and use the third person camera. Damn it. Track Proximity IR. Alert. No? Okay, what the hell's happening here? I seem to be... Okay, yeah. 
just doesn't feel like it is. Like it's like, all right, all right, that's fine. Power down. Yeah, I don't know if I hit anything before, if it was just kind of... Glitching out. Alright, let's get our little med bag here. Hopefully not get shot in the face. Or eaten by an alien plant. This is, I think, the selling point to what this game could be, though. You know, just being able to get out of your ship. I think I forgot to turn off my track IR. This is beautiful, though. Just kind of missing that sunset, but... Hmm. This place is... Seen better days. Deliver goods. Alright, I, I guess that's it, but I still have the item. Or did it just disappear? Oh, I think it's gone now. Yeah, look at this place. Some sort of lab. Gosh, this is beautiful. Creepy as well. I don't know why I can't pull out my, uh, my pistol. Oh, looks like I don't actually have one, that's why. I don't know what happened to it. Oh, you know what? I bet it was because... I died with it out or something. I think if you die with something in your hands, you lose whatever it was. That must have been it. Anyways, um, I think that's it. Uh, yeah, that mission's done. I guess we were credited to our account. Cool beans. A delivery mission out the way. Anyways. Let's go ahead and bail on Daymar if I can get out of my Moby glass. Capable vessel. Gets the job done for some small cargo runs anyway. Oof. Those are definitely some high beams. Yeah, so that looks to be my first delivery mission. Uh, like I said, I was rudely interrupted the, the, the last time I tried to do one. <laughs> but I guess that kind of gives you an idea of how those work. Very simple. Nothing crazy. Just uh, the beginnings of recovery or... Potentially the future of space trucking. I don't know. Uh, there are some other missions. I know there's more coming in 3.4. Uh, you obviously have your mercenary missions that are more combat uh, related. Usually appointment. I don't know what this is. 
I'm guessing you gotta talk to somebody, investigation. Go check something out. Investigation missions, I think they had at the very beginning of the universe mode. There's some sort of racing missions as well, more delivery missions. Um that we could potentially check out. I'd have to, of course, get back to base, find another ship if I was going to do like anything combat related. Again, combat right now is kind of meh until they do the 3.5 uh, flight model. Overhaul. Gosh, look at that. Oh my goodness. That's just... We gotta... We gotta... Look at that. Whoa. Flashbang out. We'll block it with the strut. Sorry, I'm distracted by scenery again. Look at that. My goodness, that's gorgeous. Wow. I love Elite Dangerous, but you don't get anything like this in that game. Not yet, anyway. Not yet. We don't have atmospheric flight in that game yet. I'll admit, you know, I've been skeptical the past few years with this game, but, you know, the, the latest updates for Star Citizen, I'm starting to get a little bit more hope. That's beautiful. I must need to hook up uh, an Xbox controller so that I can bind it to the mouse views. I guess I could do my joystick binds as well. Anyways, what was I saying <laughs> before I got distracted by scenery as I always do? Um, combat wise, I could probably try to do a combat mission uh, for you, for those of you that haven't been watching me play this on Twitch, but um, as of right now, the combat's a bit sketchy until they, they redo the flight model. Um, you end up almost in like a turret fight, more so than an, an actual interesting looking dogfight of sorts. Um, and it's just, it's just really clunky currently, uh, with the ships not behaving 100%. But I think with that, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be our little... YouTube dosage of uh, Star Citizen. Uh, if you enjoyed this off-stream presentation of it, let me know. I have obviously been focusing more on Twitch these days. It just uh, tends to be a far more pleasant experience. Uh, it is a lot of fun interacting directly with you through the Twitch chat. YouTube uh, can make things quite difficult on content creators these days, so it's not necessarily my preferred platform, but if the demand was uh, great enough. Uh, I could see myself maybe putting out a few more things like this. Um, as this did kind of remind me of the old days uh, creating DayZ videos, it was kind of like that weird exploration feel with, with conversation added to it and discussion. So it was kind of fun. I enjoyed it. So with that uh, description down below, I'll have some useful links. The Twitch channel, obviously. Join us there. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. If I don't have the answers, somebody else will. Um, I'll have a link to the friend referral page, which will give you a code that you can use in game. You can reserve it for later. You don't have to buy anything, but if you do decide to buy into the game, you'll get 5,000 credits, which you can use to spend on, uh, in game items currently. And of course, when the game goes live and maybe we'll take a look at some of those, uh, like weapons and pieces of armor that you can buy at a later date. And so, yeah, I think we're done here. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much for joining me. It's always appreciated. I will definitely see you on the next one.